Michelle Ann Driggers was born on November 15, 1979, in the city of Laurenburg, Scotland County, North Carolina, to parents Jimmy Driggers and Portia Abbott. Michelle grew up in Maxton, a small town just seven miles east of Laurenburg, alongside her four siblings, brother Geoffrey and sisters Sarah, Shelley and Mary. By 2003, Michelle was 23 years old and was a mother to three children, a son and two daughters. Having to provide for three young children was hard, but Michelle made sure to do whatever it took to provide for her family, having worked various jobs such as waitressing at a Huddle House diner, Cracker Barrel restaurant and a Central Park. It was rumoured that Michelle was struggling financially, as many of us have experienced, and this resulted in Michelle deciding to take on sex work, but whether she did actually partake in such activities at the time is unknown. She was unemployed, therefore an income would have needed to come from somewhere. Her parents, Jimmy and Portia, told the Robesonian newspaper that, quote, Michelle was a good daughter, but had problems like everyone else. Though a close-knit community, Lumberton is a place where poverty is rife, with 35% of its population of 22,000 living below the poverty line. Many struggle to make ends meet there. Driggers was last seen at approximately 3am on Sunday, March 30th of 2003 by some friends near Chippewa Street in East Lumberton, Robeson County. At approximately 11am that same morning, 23-year-old Michelle's bruised body was found in the driveway of a small overgrown cemetery by Hestertown Road in Lumberton, approximately 25 miles away from her home. This was a common place for prostitution. Michelle's body was face down in the dirt, nude. Her clothes had been scattered around her and she appeared to have been victim to a horrific attack, which ultimately ended her life. According to investigators, Michelle had been beaten, struck over the head with a blunt object and, according to other sources, strangled, stabbed and sexually assaulted with an unknown sharp object. Cause of death has not been revealed to the public. Michelle's demise was clearly a brutal and painful one, one which nobody, regardless of their background or circumstance, should ever have to suffer through. In 2009, Michelle's family offered a $500 reward for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons involved in the death of their beloved daughter. In regards to the police investigation having come very much to a standstill, Michelle's father Jimmy told reporters, quote, I just think this case isn't coming along fast enough. Whatever she's done, she didn't deserve to be beaten to death. I just want to try and speed up the process and find the person who brutally killed my daughter. After almost 20 years, Michelle's murder has never been solved. Some believed she died by the hands of a serial killer operating in the area, something which is definitely a possibility here. Just weeks after Michelle's body was found, on July 12th, the body of 36-year-old Lisa Hardin of the Lumbee tribe was found in a wooded area by old railway tracks behind a warehouse off Town Common and Chippewa Street, the same area where Michelle Driggers was last seen alive and just one mile away from where her body was later found. 
Lisa was known to partake in survival sex work in the area and, similarly to Michelle, was found with her clothes removed, her orange Harley Davidson shirt having been pulled over her chest and her underwear tied around her ankle. She too was covered in bruises, having been beaten, strangled and hit with a blunt object. Many questioned whether a serial killer was killing indigenous sex workers, though no evidence has been found to support this theory. Authorities do believe that there is a possible link between Michelle and Lisa's cases, and furthermore between the cases and the murders of three women who were killed in the Lumberton area in 2017. Megan Oxenadine, Kristen Christina Bennett and Rhonda Jones, all of whom were found within a four block radius of one another. On April 18th of 2017, both Christina and Rhonda's bodies were discovered in the area. Rhonda, who was 36 years old, was found naked, partially decomposed and face down in a residential garbage can. She had cuts to her face and a small breakage in her nose, though it's unclear whether these injuries occurred post-mortem. Rhonda was a well-loved mother to five children, though had suffered homelessness and was dealing with chemical dependency. Some traces of cocaine were found in her system, but it was not linked to her cause of death. That same day, Christina, who was 32 years old, her naked and partially decomposed body was found inside a home on Peachtree Street. Unfortunately, very little else is known about Christina's case. Megan Oxenadine was 28 years old and was last heard from two weeks prior to her naked and decomposing body being found in a bush outside a home on East 8th Street on June 3rd. Not much is known regarding the circumstances surrounding her death, though traces of cocaine and possibly heroin were found in her system, though once again this did not directly contribute to her death. According to her mother, Megan had been attacked by an unknown assailant and had her hair cut just weeks after Christina and Rhonda's bodies were found. Her family believed that Megan possibly knew something about what had happened to them, which was why she was targeted, but we may never know the truth. It's interesting to note that Megan appeared in a new stint, actually regarding Rhonda Jones's murder. Following the murders of Oxenadine, Bennett and Jones, all of whom's causes of death could not be determined due to decomposition, the FBI got involved. They are currently offering a $40,000 reward for information in regards to these three cases. The disappearance of 20-year-old Abby Patterson, who also vanished from the Lumberton area on the morning of September 5th of 2017, is also possibly linked to these cases. She left her home on East 9th Street at approximately 11am to run some errands, walking towards Inglewood Avenue, before entering a brown Buick sedan. Though the owner of the vehicle was traced and questioned, they explained that they had given Abby a lift and dropped her off somewhere. She hasn't been seen or heard from since. There is currently a $5,000 reward for any information leading to Abby's whereabouts. Like Oxenadine, Bennett and Jones, Patterson struggled with drug addiction and just prior to her disappearance had returned home from a rehabilitation program in Florida. Though there are some similarities between the three murders and Abby's disappearance, authorities are not convinced that the two cases are related. The bottom line is that no arrests have ever been made in regards to the murders of Michelle Driggers, Lisa Hardin, Megan Oxenadine, Christina Bennett or Rhonda Jones, nor in connection to the disappearance of Abby Patterson. These six women are yet to receive justice, with their families left heartbroken 
desperately seeking answers. Those with any information regarding the murders of Michelle Driggers or Lisa Hardin are urged to contact either the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation at 910-486-1262 or the Lumberton Police Department on 910-671-3846. Those with any information regarding the murders of Megan Oxenadine, Rhonda Jones or Christina Bennett, or in regards to the disappearance of Abby Patterson, should contact the Charlotte office of the FBI at 704-672-6100. Abby was 20 years old when she disappeared, of Caucasian origin, standing at 5 feet 7 and weighing 140 pounds. She was last seen wearing a white shirt and a pair of brown shorts. She has a dark coloured birthmark on the back of her right thigh and a tattoo of three birds in black ink on the back of her right shoulder. We can only hope that for the families of all six of these women, one day justice will prevail. Thank you.